So hi, anyone and everyone, today we're going through a sad one, and that's the disease and life of the elephant man, Joseph Merrick. A man born with a severe deformity that ravaged his body. For the longest time, scientists thought Joseph suffered from a genetic disease known as neurofibromatosis 1. It's a disease that causes the growth of nodules all over the body. Later on, however, they discovered that this wasn't the case. He was actually plagued with a disease known as Proteus Syndrome. So let's get started with a brief history of the life of Joseph Merrick. So he was born in August 5th of 1862 and died in April 11th of 1890 in England. As you can see, he died pretty young but he had a lot of suffering in that short period of time. Why? Because people can be really horrible sometimes. Before he was born, his mother was scared by an elephant, and in that time, they believed that was the cause of his deformity. As a young boy, his mother, one of the few people who loved him in spite of his deformities, died of pneumonia, and he had to live with his abusive father and stepmother who saw him as a burden. Working to earn his keep, he lost several odd jobs because people were afraid of him. Even when he hid his face, he eventually ran away and ended up in a work camp that essentially enslaved people and society rejected. Later in life, he joined a freak show briefly and he actually started making some money, but even that fell through. Eventually, he had several painful surgeries to remove some of the facial growths. And while in the hospital, he died from what doctors of the time thought was suffocation. From his head, his massive head, compressing his, wind, his windpipe. So now for the science. I have plans to do neurofibromatosis later on, but let's get into Proteus Syndrome. Now, Proteus syndrome is a rare um, condition that affects less than one in every million person. And currently, only a few hundred people are known to have it. It's caused by a genetic change that happens randomly, so it isn't passed from parent to child. It causes skin, bone, and other tissue to grow unnaturally. The overgrowth usually only affects one side of the body, as in the case of Joseph Merrick. Affected babies don't usually show signs until later on, between 18 months to 6 years. In Joseph's case, it was around 5 years. So people with the disease experience overgrowth of almost any part of the body. The condition actually causes a bulky skin growth called cerebriform connective tissue nevus that's almost exclusively seen in Proteus syndrome. This is the wrinkling growths on his hands, back and feet. The people with the disease are also at increased risks of blood clots called deep venous thrombosis. So doctors diagnose the disease using published clinical diagnostic criteria which is basically doing a checklist and if you have enough points then you most likely have the disease also DNA tests are done on the tissue that can be cut out what we call a biopsy and you can look at the affected you can look for the affected gene which is called AKT1 so Proteus disease has no cure so the next best thing is symptom management with all the tissue overgrowth, sometimes surgery can be done to help with mobility and comfort. Besides that, we can't downplay the benefits of counseling because support can make all the difference. Affected patients and their families need to talk to somebody that understands their daily struggles. From the physical challenging challenges to bullying because some kids are just evil bastards to a child accepting their different appearance. Every family will have unique journeys and challenges 